Today we'll take a look at Tom Cruise to see which facial plastic surgeries he may have had done. We'll reveal the cost of everything at the end, so stay tuned. In 1981, at the age of 19, you can see Tom with a low, youthful hairline with no signs of recession at all. You can see his strong eyebrows and notice how linear they are. In men, that's a very normal feature compared to in women where there's more arching in the brow. You can see the smooth lower eyelid to cheek transition with prominent lateral cheekbone structure. He has a very characteristic nose with tip bulbosity and bridge asymmetry. He's got very good lip definition, a strong chin and jawline, and a very acute cervical mental angle to his neck. In 1983, at the age of 21, Notice the upper eyelid hooding that Tom has, although he still appears very youthful, vibrant, and does not look tired. Notice here how Tom Cruise has facial asymmetry, with the right side of his face being his bigger side in all dimensions. The right eyebrow sits at a higher level than the left. The right ala of the nose is positioned higher than the left. His right cheekbone is stronger and higher, and even the muscles on the right side of his face pull stronger than the left. And you can see with this smile that he has how the right side's being pulled more. And the nasal tip is also deviated towards that right side. And as we discuss in many other videos, this is normal, and we all have this to one degree or another. In 1985, at the age of 23, you can see how the shadowing in this photo highlights his incredible jawline definition and very masculine feature of a strong gonial angle. The gonial angle is this portion right here, this portion of the mandible. He has a relatively short philtrum with good upper tooth show. The central and lateral incisors are visible on the position we call repose with the mouth gently open. In 1987 at the age of 25 you can see here his strong masseter muscle that's the muscle right here that sometimes people put Botox into to help with things like TMJ or slimming of the face. But in Tom Cruise's case, it really helps define his gonial angle and provides definition there. In 1989, at the age of 27, he still has a very strong hairline and he's starting to have some infraorbital hollowing that's right under the lower eyelid there and he does have some gum show on his uh, full smile view so he would be a poor lip lift candidate please remember to subscribe to this channel in 1990 at the age of 28 i think tom cruise has a nose that really helps define his looks and even though it doesn't necessarily fit the textbook ideal it's his nose and it works for him. And it's an important reminder that you don't have to have a perfect nose to be very successful in life. In 1991, at the age of 29, Nicole has entered the picture. And when I zoom out and just take a look at Tom from afar, the key distinguishing features for Tom Cruise are his hair, specifically at the scalp and the eyebrows, and his jaw structure. In 1992, at age 30, there's no major changes. Same thing at age 31, 32, 33, and 34. I'm not seeing any major changes. In 1997, at the age of 35, I'm starting to see some early aging effects with wrinkles on the forehead and the crow's feet becoming more pronounced. Also, the medial cheek appears more prominent. So that begs the question, did Tom Cruise get cheek implants around this time? Not totally clear, but it's possible and that would have improved his infraorbital hollowing as well as just the cheekbone structure. Compare this to age 30, five years earlier, and we're going to point out here the left cheek contour change that I see occurring. In 1998 at age 36, no major change, same thing at age 37. In 2000 at the age of 38, Tom Cruise really hasn't changed too much, but at the age of 39, one thing to point out here is that the hairline in the central position does appear to be more thin. Now, to me, this doesn't look like something completely novel as I look back at his prior images, but it's just important to point out that this is one form of like a cowlick where the direction of hair is splitting off. In the middle there, he has this thinner area. The hair to the right of that partition combs to the right, to the left of it's combed to the left, and in the center you have hairs that are starting to go more perpendicular, and so it creates this appearance of a thinner zone. And that's something that's been maintained uh, over time for him. At the age of 40, I'm seeing some static forehead 
wrinkles. At the age of 41 in 2003, especially in this image on the right, I'm starting to think that Tom gets some lip filler because his lip is looking fuller than what he used to. Also, potentially, he had some cheek filler as well because the cheeks are looking more filled in in the medial and the lateral aspects of them. In 2004, at the age of 42, I've not seen any major change as well as at the age of 43 and 44. In 2007, just something to point out, at 45 years old, he has flawless skin here and this just is a testament to Tom Cruise's excellent skincare and all he does to maintain that. At the age of 46 in 2008, Tom has maintained so much wonderful hair. I don't think he's had a hair transplant, but what I do think is that he's been on very good medical therapy now for many years. And first line preventative therapy, as I talk about in many of my other videos, is finasteride and minoxidil. And my guess is that Tom has been on both of them in order to maintain such good hair for so many years. In 2009, at the age of 47, I'm seeing signs of potential tear trough filler. You can see it starting to settle out on that right lower eyelid area. In 2010, at the age of 48, I'm starting to notice that the lateral brows are descending. The lateral brow will drop more than the central brow as we age, and this is something we're starting to see at about age 48 for Tom Cruise. In 2011, age 49, I don't see any major changes, and same thing at age 50 and 51. In 2014, at the age of 52, I'm starting to see some more fullness in the face. Now this could be a result of some weight changes or it could be the use of additional filler over time. Some people start to develop some filler fatigue as we've seen with many other people. In 2015, at the age of 53, I'm seeing continued use of Botox, which is really helping with his forehead wrinkles and continued skin care and probably some skin resurfacing over the years. At the age of 54, I'm not seeing any additional changes. In 2017, at age 55, we're seeing continued thinning of this central partition of Tom Cruise's hair. He also has some more static wrinkles, or as we call them in technical terms, rightids, developing in his forehead and the glabellar area, as well as the crow's feet. And in the lower eyelids, we're seeing some pseudo herniation of fat. I don't see that in future photos or more recent photos rather. So that to me suggests that maybe he's had a lower blepharoplasty. 2018, at the age of 56, there are no additional changes, same thing at age 57. In 2020, at age 58, I'm seeing some signs of a potential facelift and maybe a fat transfer that was performed. When I look at his right tragus, you know, I'm always pointing out the, the tragus areas because they can be a telltale sign of facelift surgery. The right tragus to me has changed shape and we're gonna show you a comparison to a 2015 photo. And the sideburn is now positioned higher than it used to be. As facelifts are done, oftentimes some of that sideburn skin gets removed and with that, some of the hairs in that area and it could make it so that there's a less prominence to your sideburn area and the tragus can get pulled forward a bit, opening it up and giving away some signs of a facelift. I think maybe he's had it around this time. In 2021, this has now become a pretty famous picture, age 59. Uh, time was like at a ball game and people noticed that there was definitely more fullness in his face and the question is, well, what may have caused that? I don't know for sure. It could have been, again, just changes in weight, maybe for a new role, maybe just happened to, to gain some weight. You know, we, we all do from time to time. Maybe he's had the continued use of fillers in his face. That's possible too. Maybe he had some hormonal replacement therapy with testosterone, which is known to cause some degree of swelling as well. I remember doing a short clip on Zac Efron when he also showed up with a much fuller face one day. But it could also be something like a fat transfer. Fat transfers are used for a more permanent type of filler and they're known to cause a lot of swelling that can linger for many weeks into months. And so potentially he had something like that to keep himself looking refreshed, but in the early period after the procedure could have gotten a bit of fullness in the face. 2022 at age 60, now it looks like there is less edema or less swelling in his face. So things have started to normalize a little bit. So on the high end, 
the total of all these procedures is $245,000. Since you like this video, I know you would love to find out how Elon Musk was able to restore his hair completely. Click on the card and I'll see you there.